Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a piece of Sequoia Redwood. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Bob and Marilyn, brought this to me a while back from a tree they found that had been pruned in front of a church. The branches were hanging low, and this is one of those branches. And I'm going to try and make an emerging vase from it. It's kind of wet, uh, measures about 35 to 40% moisture content. So this whole idea is probably a bad idea that I have here. It's probably going to dry and crack all over the place and turn into something I don't want in the house. But in any event, we're going to give it a try. It's out of balance because it's not a nice round straight piece of wood. So the best speed I can get is about 660 RPM. So let me get my mask and face shield on here. Grab a, I don't know, parting tool or something to flatten this off and, and make the tenon. And we'll go from there. Stand by. Well, on second thought, I think I'll flatten the bottom off with this uh, square carbide cutter. I'm just going to come straight in here, flatten it off, and maybe use that to create the tenon as well. I'm not sure. Boy, that is just wet. I didn't. I had. I thought it had been cut a while ago. Like I said, might be a bad idea. So we'll go with that for now. I, I can always refine it from the other end. I'm just gonna tighten that very loosely, and then drive it home with the live center in the same hole that was created by the drive center. That way, I know that it's. All the way in the chuck. I don't know if I want to leave these natural bark areas. They look kind of nice. If I can pick the speed up any, I don't think so. Well, maybe. About 740. Let's switch to a half inch shallow grind spindle gouge. substantial piece of the you know the base the log but maybe it shouldn't be the same as this although this is taller right now but maybe it needs to be a little bit taller I am getting the shape that I wanted so that's kind of surprise to me I've never turned wood this wet this is just sopping wet which I guess is a good thing as far as ease of turning I think I'm gonna come down here a little further. Not too much. Don't let me get carried away, cause I'll do it. And then we'll all be sorry. Back to the three quarter inch, or maybe that's one inch. I don't know what that is. One inch maybe. Spindle gouge. And back to a more modern spindle gouge, half inch. Okay, well that's about as far as I wanna go as far as height. This is about right. Um, I think I'm gonna take off this part that I did earlier at the bottom. I think it's just going to be straight off. Well, 
Yeah, I guess I'll leave these two bark spots. Not sure what I'm trying to do here. I'd like to round this up somehow. I guess I'm gonna have to take the tailstock away in order to get at it from the right angle. I hope this isn't a waste of time because I'm kind of liking what I've got here, as rough as it is. Like that's not so good. This is so wet I don't know how it's going to react to sanding. I just don't sand or I just don't uh, turn stuff this wet typically. Okay, I'm going to drill a one and one quarter inch hole about six inches deep which will take me to the bottom of the vase part. We could go deeper but probably not going to. And we'll turn it about 400 rpm. I don't think I'm going to show you all of this because it, uh, you know, it's going to get squealy here real soon and the sound is not pleasant. So just take my word for it. This is what I'm going to be doing for a minute and I'll see you back here. Well, I took this in the house and microwaved it. Very low power, uh, power level three for one minute at a time. Uh, I left about 10, 15 minutes in between and I did it, I don't even know, four or five times. Not that much. Just, just to kind of dry the surface out, which worked. I'm sure the piece is not anywhere near dry, but the surface is, and that'll make it easier to sand. But anyway, while it was sitting in there, uh, and I had a chance to look at it a little bit, I think this is too tall. This is too thick. So I'm going to cut about an inch off of this, come up here about this far, and cut that off. So I need to make a new tenon down in here. The bonus to that is it'll be a shorter piece, so when I'm hollowing out the, the vase part, uh, hopefully it shouldn't wobble or vibrate as much as it might now. So I'm going to grab a parting tool and my mask and face shield and cut about an inch off of this and create a new tenon down here to fit in the chuck. About 700 RPM. I'm just going to take a half inch spindle gouge and waste this away. Okay, I think I'll just saw that off the rest of the way. That's running pretty true, which surprises me after drying it all. Okay, let me get resituated here and we'll start hollowing this puppy out. So I just want you to know I'm not going to make any attempt to make this completely hollow. I'm going to hollow as much as I'm comfortable with. I don't do a lot of hollowing. I don't have a hollowing rig or anything like that. I do have this hollowing tool and this hollowing tool. This one obviously has to go here and the point is to clean out from, from here to maybe halfway down this, something like that. 
This one should be able to clean out most of the rest of it. I don't use either of these all that much, so I'm not really comfortable doing it, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just because I think it should be. Although it doesn't really have to be, you know? If you don't have any hollowing tools, don't hollow it. You got a hole there, stick some flowers in there, it's all good. I don't, I don't really see the big point in it. Boy, I got a, a crack opening up here, don't I? And here, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, that'll happen, I guess. And being all wet in there, it's probably gonna clog up like a son of a gun. This is an inch and a quarter hole. So I'm gonna, also, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. Um, this lathe has reverse. I never had a lathe that had reverse before, and I, this is probably the second time I ever used it, and I didn't use it much the first time. But I think I'm gonna hollow in reverse, just because I can see better, I don't have to lean over so far. That ought to work pretty good. So let me get my mask and face shield on here and we'll get to hollowing. Now, now that I think about it, you probably can't really see much. You can't see what's really going on in there and neither can I. I'm just sticking it in there and, and letting it rub. Uh, so I will work at this for a while, taking it easy, and eventually I will grab the other tool and work in forward motion on this side, cleaning out this area here. I want you to be able to stick your finger in there and kind of go a little ways, but I'm not trying to impress anybody. I just thought it might dry more evenly if I could uh, hollow some of it out. So that's what I'll be working on. I'll bring you back in a little while. I've got the sides down to about a half inch, which is good enough for me. Uh, now I'm going to take this tool and start working on this side and try and open this up some. Well, that's probably pretty boring. So that's what I'll be working on for a little bit here. Like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to impress anyone. I just want to thin it out. I just want you to be able to stick your finger in there and go, oh, it does go back there a ways. That's all. That's all. Try and get it to dry evenly. So I'll bring you back here in a little while, when probably when it's time for sanding. I'm gonna start the sanding with uh, my Sando Flex sanding the bark and the idea here is just to get off all the loose stuff I don't know how far down I have to go uh, I'm in for as big a surprise as you are we'll just see what we got to do Well, that worked really well. I'm not done. I'm using 80 grit, which is uh, typically I'd use 180, and I'll, I will probably work my way up to 180 on the bark. But I, I want to be sure I've got all the loose stuff off of here. And that's working pretty darn good. And then, so after I've got that done, working through the grits up to 180 on the bark, then I'll switch to my 2 inch sanding disc and start sanding this. I'm not going to uh, try and keep this bark on exactly. You know, the color is going to be there, and that's all I'm after. I can't, I can't sand this without sanding that, and that's okay. The bark will probably be gone, but you will see the outline. You will see the color difference, and that's, that's what I'm after. And I'll do the same thing down here. I'll have to use sanding strips for this area, and maybe right here in this corner. So it's going to be fun. I'll be working on that and I'll bring you back when it's time to put some kind of finish on here. I haven't quite figured it out yet. See you in a bit. So it's late. It's uh, almost dinner time, about 5.30. So this is the only coat I'm going to put on tonight. I'll come out tomorrow in the cold, cold, cold and put a second coat on. Maybe, maybe I'll abrade it in between. I'm not real sure. 
see what it's like tomorrow. So there you go. Update complete. I'll bring you back when it's time to do something. I don't know. I don't even know what's next. So I guess uh, part it off, huh? I guess that's the next step. This isn't a bowl. There's no tenon to turn around and take off. Well, there is a tenon, but we'll just part it off. But I think it looks kind of cool. The red's starting to come through. That's kind of nice here and there. So I'll see you tomorrow. It's been a few days. Uh, the piece is done. I need to cut it off the lay of the course. And that's the next step we'll be doing. I wanted to let you know that I'm a little afraid of this piece. And the reason I'm afraid of it is because it just made me sick. Uh, I think the last time we were together I was putting the first coat of uh, sanding sealer on it. And then I was going in the house for the night and I was going to come out the next day and finish it up. Well, I got in the house and I just got sick. And it was kind of a, uh, kind of a hallucinatory sick, almost. I think it affected my lungs. And I think it was the bark. Uh, I think it was the sanding of the bark. I had my wife look up uh, redwood to see if there's, um, if people have reactions to redwood in general, not the bark specifically. And she said it can cause uh, asthma-like symptoms. Well, I don't have asthma as far as I know, and I've never had it. So I don't know what those symptoms are. I guess it makes breathing hard. I don't think breathing was hard, but boy, I was sick. I mean, lay down on the couch, cover up, shiver, and sick. And uh, that was one day. The next day, I was feeling a little bit better, but still not good enough to come out here. And then the next day was yesterday, and my soldier granddaughter, Miranda, was here from her station in Hawaii. And she's here for Thanksgiving, and we went out to lunch, so that was nice. And I felt much better yesterday. And so today I've been out here. Uh, it, this has two coats of sanding sealer on it, a shellac-based sanding sealer, and two coats of shellac. And um, I didn't sand in between coats, because sanding this just makes me nervous. But I did just take one of my uh, white abrasive pads and smoothed over the finish. And um, I think it looks pretty good. Like I said, I only sanded up to 180 grit. So you can feel, you can feel the growth rings. This feels like wood. It doesn't feel like a finish. It feels like wood. It's got a kind of a nice little sheen to it. Not, not too shiny. Maybe it's shiny right here. Uh, but it's, it's just a pretty nice finish and it feels good to the touch and I'm glad it's just about done. I'm still a little intimidated to cut it off of this tenon down here, but I guess I got to do it. It's not much good sitting here on my lathe. So that's what's next. Stand by for fun. So separating this is going to create its own problems. Uh, I've got a long ways to go to separate this. I did bring up the tailstock and it's just gently applying pressure inside the opening of the vase. Because I'm undercutting the bottom here, I want it to set on this edge. And like I said, I've got a long ways to go. It's going to be difficult to get a smooth cut. I'm just going to use a parting tool. And then all that's going to have to be sanded after I finally get it separated. And I don't think I can separate it on the lathe because my hand isn't big enough to go around this. I can kind of get some of it, but I can't get enough of it. It's it's heavy. It's a heavy piece. Remember, this is all solid wood. And this is pretty much solid here. So the whole piece is kind of heavy. So I don't quite know how this is going to go. I don't feel real confident. And like I said, I'm still intimidated by this piece. But we'll just work at it slowly and see what happens. I don't think I can cut it all the way off. But because it's undercut, I can't really take a saw to it either once I get it down small. So I don't know. We'll just play it by ear. Gonna be fun. Let me get my mask on. I'm not doing anything without a mask. I can tell you that. Hold on.
going to be turning at about 800 RPM. Well, what I started to say was we're dealing with the center of the branch, so it's it's all pith, which isn't particularly strong, of course, and that's why I'm afraid it's going to break. I'm going to take it off, take it over here to the workbench and grab a chisel and somehow just cut it off. Stand by for even more fun. I couldn't figure out any other way to get at this without hurting the upper part, so I'm just taking a chisel and my mallet and... Kind of working my way around. I'll probably just sand it up from there. Well, there it is. One redwood emerging vase in the books. And I'm glad. I'm glad it's over. It's not the nicest job I've ever done in my life. I promise you that. The bottom feels a lot better than it looks. It's actually quite smooth, but you can see all the growth rings. You can see the texture of the wood, but you really can't feel it. It's, it's quite smooth. I think I got the proportions right. Once I determined I needed to cut about an inch off the bottom. So it's done. What do you think? If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. If you're inclined to comment, please do. I respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.